just what I mean You too, team, keep it clean You see my boy, he like got a made it Shout out to Graven. Team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video and another episode of NFL Questions from Subscribers. But this is another special episode because it features a very special, special guest. Highly requested guest as well. But before we get into this episode of Questions from Subs, I got to say I appreciate y'all. Shout out to all the team. Oh, man. I'm getting so hyped. I done hit the mic. Shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean patrons. I love y'all. Thank you. Team Keep It Clean. We are getting through this slow season. We getting there. It ain't slowed down over here. But... It, we getting through it together, all together. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Without any further ado, oh my fault. I forgot. I forgot about it. If you want to be part of question, if you want to be part of an NFL question from subscribers, then you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail .com, and we'll answer your question in a video just like this. Or for the patrons, if you want to be part of an NFL question from subscribers, you just send it directly on Patreon. Y'all already know what time it is. Love all of y'all. Appreciate all of y'all. Sorry to the mic. Let me fix that. Uh, my apologies. Anyway, let's so YouTube do it. team keep it clean. The special guest in this episode of Questions from Subscribers, a highly requested guest too. We got Sip to Tally, aka Coach Evans. So, Coach, um, before we get into it, why, why, why do you do YouTube? What, what, what was your reasoning for doing it? Okay, it's a, it's a little story time since you asked. It started off as a straight podcast, similar to, to what you do. And there, there was a podcast here in town, and they talked about local high school athletes. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was um, not a good podcast, so to speak. It was more <laughs> politics. Oh, and so oh. in my words, I wanted to get one with local coaches, and we talk about the local athletes, and then maybe even give the athletes a platform to talk about their recruitment and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And so um, it started off as a podcast. It was Sip the Tally podcast. I did maybe 12 or so episodes. Then we had a thing called Tally Up the Points with a couple coaches, and we talked about their schedule and games and kind of summarized it up like a Monday morning quarterback type deal. All and right. so um, I don't know if you know, but Vice Lombardi actually played center for me in, while he was in high school, and he was doing his thing with the Cowboys. He's oh, a Cowboys YouTuber. So he was, he was a center for me in like, maybe oh nine ten eleven like that i, and I never I was, knew he played for you man. yeah and so he was doing his thing at cowboys and he asked me you know try it out and i yeah. said and at the time i didn't really see any ravens presence on youtube but i wasn't really looking either and um so i did it and i liked it cool, and then the the fact that um you know people would ask questions and was intrigued by what i had to say mm -hmm. made me hungrier to to do more and then i think i came across your channel and kind of saw what you was doing. I said, well, I'm going to do a little something different because all, all of us don't need to do the same thing. And then right. I started seeing other different guys are coming in. And mm -hmm. once I got a thousand, a thousand subscribers, no, not a thousand subscribers. It was going slow. And then when Lamar took over and the fact that I was able to break down some of the stuff Lamar was doing, right. and the channel took off. Mm -hmm. So I went from maybe 300 subscribers to a thousand in Lamar's breakout time. And that just fueled the hunger to, to keep going. And it's now just it's part of my daily life. I just, I just love doing it. Yeah, man. It is fun. And um, I, I appreciate your perspective. And like you said, it's, it's a lot of people that do the Ravens content and whatnot. But everybody got their own different viewpoints. And they, they all bring something different uh, to the table. And, and you, um, you are an actual coach. So Correct. you know the X's and O's. You know your stuff. You could break this and that down and watching the film and all that and see what went right, what went wrong and all that, which I appreciate about you. Um, but how is it coaching? How, how is it when you actually watching the, the Ravens play or watching whatever team play? Mm -hmm. Do you look at it in a more analytical view viewpoint or whatnot, or do you just enjoy the game and relax? Well, I, I'm pretty sure you don't just enjoy the game and relax. <laughs> I enjoy other people's games. And, ah, uh, but when it comes – when I watch us play – Mm -hmm. It's. I try to relax, but when things aren't going right, I start my eyes start going to different places. Like mm -hmm. no, normal, normal people just watch the ball. Yeah, I don't. 
when it when if we if we blowing somebody out, we doing we moving good. I watch the ball and enjoy the game and relax. But if mm -hmm. it's if it's crunch time, it's a close game. I'm watching certain people that I think are certain areas where I think we we get to see who doing what. Mm, okay, and so I like that's, that. that's that's, that's kind of how I look at it. But I really would love to just, you know, the last time I just relaxed and watched the game was the one game I went to. Uh, oh, the, the Pittsburgh Eagles, game. Right? Oh, the Pittsburgh week seventeen, right? Week seventeen, yeah. I just I was able to just mm -hmm. chill, and Ken was able to get me a, a lot better seat than I had because <laughs> a lot of people didn't come because it was raining. Yeah, and I just chilled and and watched the game. I enjoyed. it. <laughs> That's what I said, and that was a chill game too because it it didn't mean RG, anything RG3 for the Ravens. Started. Yeah, so that was super chill. There was no pressure, man. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, where where can everybody find you at your YouTube channel, Twitter? Anything else? Where, where can they find you at? So on YouTube is uh, Sip the Tally Films. On uh, Twitter is Coach Evans Nine, and on Instagram is Sip the Tally. So those are the three platforms that I'm fairly active on. Instagram being the least active, but I need to pick that back up myself. <laughs> it's all good, man. So the links to all of his stuff will be down below in the description. And without further ado, let's get into it. The first question came from my guy Air Farrick. He said. Uh, you have a suspect pass rush where you have to go up against the likes of a Mahomes who has the best offensive line that KC has ever put in front of him, but PFF already has them ranked number seven. And it could get ugly for the Ravens, not only in that game, but going forward. And he said this is why he thinks the Ravens team will give up a lot of points. So um, I'll get started with this one. I, I, I can see what you're saying, but I don't necessarily agree. Uh, because with Wink, we know Wink, he loves to bring pressure. Uh, and that's whether, whether it's coming from a veteran pass rusher or a younger pass rusher or from the cornerback safeties, he'll bring pressure from anybody. Now, um, another thing that he said he thinks the Ravens are going to give up a lot of points because of that, because of the lack of a pass rush and whatnot. I think something that sort of counters that, and we don't know what the Ravens pass rush is going to be yet. We don't know how Adafi away is going to be, Daylon Hayes, McPhee, Ferg, all them, Bowser. We don't know how they're going to be yet because we haven't seen them on the field. But um, with the Ravens, the last two years, they've led the league in points. So that means they're scoring a lot. Uh, so in turn, that can actually help the defense, uh, make it easier for the defense, make it easier for the pass rush too, make it easier for the cornerbacks, make it easier for everybody on defense because they'll be having to play catch up. Uh, but coach, what 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 do you think about this with the uh, the pass rush as it is right now on mm -hmm. June eighteenth? When y'all see this video, I don't know. But on June eighteenth, with the pass rush the way it is, do you think the Ravens should be concerned that they're going to give up a lot of points? Uh, first part, first time to answer that question is on any given Sunday, anybody can 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 get made to look ugly. Because if I'm not mistaken, the Raiders beat the Chiefs last year. Mm -hmm. no, I think so, and they the Raiders did. were not very good. But uh, as far as our pass rush. The main thing with Mahomes, I feel, is going to be pressure. You can't let him sit there and, you know, go to a second and third read because those second and third reads are burners. So he has to he has to be one read and get off his rocker. And even though we don't want him running and throwing, but that's probably going to give you the best chance to get him. You got to get pressure on the edge. And you might, you don't have to get the sack. You got to get pressure off the edge and push up the middle. You don't mm. have to get the sack. But long as you get pressure off the edge and push up the middle, you can you can control him and don't don't give him enough time to let Tyreek get behind you, because no matter what the combination is, no matter who the DB is, if you give him three and a half to five seconds, Tyreek's gonna run past anybody in the NFL. Yeah, man, that dude was cold, man. But I agree that with Adafe and, and Hayes and them other guys, we don't know what we're gonna get. But the mm -hmm. way Wink draws up pressure and the athleticism of just those two guys. Not to mention the other guys we got. Mm. It, Wink plus that speed is is different, and you know most people know I wasn't a fan of uh, Adafi at first, but just think, just thinking about how Wink draws up pressure, what Campbell can do, what Williams can do, and then you got a guy that's maybe not as good as Judon yet, but it's probably faster and quicker twitch than Judon, and can maybe get home where Judon's getting so many pressures. This dude may can turn those pressures into QB hits, and then eventually into sacks which is what we're going to need, you know, eventually. Next question came from my guy, Jerome. He said, just a thought about something. Um, every year, teams, Ravens included, juggle the cap and let players go while signing others. EDC will give Lamar, Andrews, and others money, but with the drafting of Rashad Bateman, he doesn't have to overpay to keep Hollywood. Eric DaCosta isn't just filling needs. He's got his eyes way down the road 
predicting obstacles. What are your thoughts? And I'll let you get started with that. I, I, I didn't think about it like that, but that's an interesting take, especially if Hollywood doesn't turn out to be what we all want him to be. Now, you know, I personally think, you know, he's gotten better each year. He's gotten stronger. He's gotten uh, his his quickness back from when he came in with the injury. Right. But um, EDC, and I, I think Lamar said this the other day, uh, every dollar counts. Right. That he... Well, he don't make all the moves that we want, mm -hmm. but he's thinking so far ahead of what we're thinking. We're thinking 2021. He's looking at 24, 25, and what his cap going to be on down the line when mm -hmm. Lamar's big time money kicks in. And I and I love him for that because you know a lot of us just think right now, and then right. we're stuck. You know, year two, year three, with um, uh, who's the team that paid all those people? The Eagles that year when they paid Vic and oh. had that and they didn't look how long they were stuck with with cap issues, but with uh, DaCosta, he's a uh, analytical guy, strategic. He's making every dollar count, and I I believe that uh, if Hollywood does not pan out to be worth a, a huge contract, then you have Bateman. Then you know you got Wallace too. So you got you got two guys that could be in the running to be a one and two. If we don't resign Hollywood when his time comes, hmm. yeah, man, that is um, that's something real interesting to think about. Uh, and that's never I I never really even thought about that either until uh, Jerome brought it up. Um, especially with uh, both of them being first round picks too. Uh, mm -hmm. with with them being first round picks, uh, the expectation is a lot higher, uh, and they're expected to deliver a lot sooner. Um, and with Rashad being a rookie, this is 2021. Hollywood came in, what, 2019? So this is his third year. Mm -hmm. um, so next year will be his fourth year. But next year, during next year, well, after next season, uh, we'll find out if the Ravens end up picking up that fifth-year option or right. not. Um, so that will uh, tell, start to tell a big part of whatever this story is going to end up being. Uh, but, yeah, that's just something to watch out for in the future. And that would put um that would put uh Bateman what twenty twenty six maybe twenty twenty five? Yeah for his, 20, for his fifth year? Yeah, for his fifth year. Yeah. So twenty one, two, three, four, yeah, and five. Yeah. So we got we got time to figure it out. And then with um Wallace, he's he got three years, if I'm not mistaken, right? I think they get four years. Yeah, four? I okay. Believe. yeah. Okay. So we, we so, set up every receiver spot for his cap wise, I think, for a minute. Next question came from my guy, Nick Brick. He said, Engraving, I hope you're doing well. It's been a minute since I asked a question. Now, I was thinking about that PFF running back list and about the Lamar effect that they used to diminish J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards' talent. But that made me think, wouldn't it be the opposite? I get that Lamar draws attention, but they also face eight to ten man boxes every week. Wouldn't someone like Aaron Jones benefit from the Rodgers effect in which teams have to worry about Devontae Adams and Aaron Rodgers so much that they would have to sacrifice people in the run game to protect themselves from being hit over the top? Oh, that's a good point. I never thought about that in reverse. Uh, this applies to a lot of teams that throw 30 plus times per game. My point isn't that one running back may have it harder than another, but I just think it's weird that every running back stands on his own except when they talk about the Ravens backs, who I think could go toe to toe with a lot of these running back duos. What do you think about this? Is there something I'm missing? Wow, I, I, I never, ever uh, thought about that. Anytime I think about the Ravens run game and, and that conversation, I think the same thing. Oh, yeah, L Lamar makes it easier for other people because Lamar, he poses the threat of running as well. But the way that you put it with teams, they, they know the Ravens are going to run the ball. They know Lamar is going to get his. They know J.K. Gus is going to get theirs too. Um, but they, they still, most of the time, they still don't stop it. Um, and there's been less of a threat for the Ravens to to go over top of you with the past because, you know, they, they their strength is in the run game. That's their bread and butter. Um, so teams, they stack the box, they crowd the box, and they wait for the Ravens to run. And like I said, they, a lot of times they still don't even stop it, but they still crowd the box and do that. But with other guys, like, a, like you mentioned, Aaron Rodgers and teams that may throw the ball a lot more than the Ravens, uh, especially if they have a legitimate outside wide receiver, there's that chance that if you crowd the box, that receiver, they could beat you up top. So there's that fear of that. So um, I, I I love the way that Nick put it because that actually makes a lot of sense. And yeah, I've never thought about that that way before. What about you? So so football in general is a, is a numbers game. And if you got a guy like Devontae that 
probably there's not one corner that can cover him. You've got to have safety help. So now, you you know, for the rest of the field, you're playing 10 on 9 or 9 on 10, maybe whichever way it is. And then you can run the ball. That's where Aaron Jones benefits from that. And now imagine if Green Bay had a, another threat, even a, a good tight end. I mean, they got one guy, but just a big name guy. Uh, Aaron Jones would have, you know, two miles to run. <laughs> but it, it, it's still it's a team concept, and you got to have – uh, guys that make the other part of the game better. So, if, like you said, Ra- Ravens get a lot of stack boxes. So, if we get to the point, and it's funny that um, th- this question came up because I talked about it last night on mine. Whenever you see this, <laughs> um, a lot of the runs that we have are read runs, especially in third down situations. I talked about third down situations with J.K. and most of the runs were either counter bash, which Lamar has an option to keep it, or power read, which Lamar has an option to keep it. So him, you know, being a running threat does help um, our running backs because you have to be disciplined in your in your gap integrity, and you can't just sell out and go tackle the running back because Lamar will come out and probably hurt you, you know, worse than J.K. or Gus or whoever else running the ball will. Now, looking forward, if we produce in the passing game like I think we will, and we don't have to just blow it out the water and throw for 4,500 yards. But- if we throw for – 35 to anywhere around that 35 at the run game you probably see, you're probably going to see more runs honestly we don't even, we don't even have to throw for 35 if we come out early and hit deep to intermediate routes and people mm-hmm. have to ha- play too high which is too safe to high we're gonna run the ball all day which mm-hmm. you know as much as we running out people complain because we didn't get over the top we'll be running the den with huge leads and people be trying to play catch up which will help the defense so it all yeah. goes back to the team concept Mm-hmm. The front end and the back end got to work together on defense. The offense got to help the defense. And for people that forgot, when Lamar first came in, our defense was not playing great. The fact that Lamar could come in and he could run it and the running backs could run it and we could control the clock. So when Suggs and them came back on the field, they were rested. They weren't as tired. When Joe was going out there going, not three and out every play, but you know, <laughs> throwing three passes and getting stuffed on third down and then they coming right back, they were tired. So when mm-hmm. Lamar got in, we started controlling the clock and then the defense got better. So that's a whole, the whole team concept. And we don't really have to talk about special teams. We've had the best special teams for a while in, in Baltimore with the three-headed monster, even though one of them gone now. Next question came from my guy, Jimmy. He said, what's good in Graven? It's Jimmy with a question from subscribers. This team is looking like they're finally ready for a trip to the AFC Championship and maybe even a Super Bowl. But we all know the pass rush is still a concern due to the unproven commodities, which brings me to this. Would you be okay with a trade for one Chandler Jones? And what do you think it would take to get a deal like this done? I recently read uh, that he has one year left on his deal and has averaged double-digit sacks for the last five out of six years. And we know the Ravens will legit try to trade for any top defender that they can get their hands on as opposed to the <laughs> to the offense. I appreciate your time and the service you provide to us and hope that you and the family are blessed, brother. Appreciate it, Jimmy. Uh, so trading for Chandler Jones, this is one that uh, I talked about a lot last year, uh, obviously before the unique and Gakwe trade. Um, I just I, I, I don't see it happening, though. I, I don't see them attempting. I don't see uh, Arizona letting him go. I mean, you never never say never, but I just don't see it happening, especially since they got J.J. Watt. So I think Arizona is going to want to really do everything that they can to keep those guys intact, keep those guys in place and have those guys as their primary pass rushers and not let Chandler Jones end up going. What about you, coach? Yeah, I feel like Arizona won't let them won't uh, even seek a trade or try to get rid of them unless they have a horrible start. If they, yeah. have, a, if they have a horrible start, if they're one in five in week six or something like that. And then they can try to move off of them so they can get something in return, whether just lose them in free agency. But mm-hmm. if they're competitive, which I foresee them being competitive, and mm-hmm. they're probably in the, you know, dare I say, the hardest division in the in the uh, NFL. That that division is pretty stacked, one through one through four. If, I, if I'm at San Francisco, is Seattle, mm-hmm. is Arizona, and and the Rams and the Rams. Mm-hmm. So they're probably in the hardest, you know division in the NFL. So they're probably going to play that out till right at the t- trade deadline. And if they're competitive, I think they'll keep him, especially if he's healthy and, and Watts healthy, because that's that's going to be tough. Yeah. You can't double both of them. That's going to be tough, especially if they got <laughs> any kind of um, 
pressure up the middle. I don't know who their interior linemen are, but both of them on different ends. That's 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 gonna be tough. Mm-hmm. But I see them staying unless they're they're not competitive uh, early in the season. That's a good point. I, I, I didn't think about it like that. Man. The next question came from my boy, uh, Kevin. He said, hey, Graven, how's it going? It's Kevin. Hope all is well. Got a business question for you since I know you love that side of football oh so much. <laughs> Ever since Gus got that nice $10 million extension, I have seen so much buzz around social media and fans about how underrated Gus Edwards is. With many media accounts putting him on post, calling him the most underrated running back in the league. Uh, my question, Engraven, is do you think that the Ravens and Eric DaCosta did this on purpose to drive up his trade stock? I know we all love Gus, but we also know that J.K. Dobbins is our running back number one, and the Ravens love their draft picks. What are your thoughts? This could also explain stuff like Todd Gurley visiting, maybe. Hmm. I, um, I never thought about that like that. Uh, and, but the way that the contract is, it's extremely cheap, like two years. Uh, it's a contract extension for two years for, uh, for five mil a piece. Like that's, that's really, really cheap. Um, and for Gus Edwards, uh, <sighs> initially when I, when I first read this question, like I was thinking like, no, I I don't think they would do that. And I still uh, don't even think that they would do that. But at the same time, um, it's a cheap deal. So I just feel like for Gus to be on the move, Ravens would have to have something that an offer that they just absolutely could not refuse. I definitely don't think anything would happen this year. Uh, the deal doesn't kick in until the following. I don't, I just, I don't, I just, I don't see it happen. <laughs> you never know, but I, yeah, I, I don't see Gus Edwards being traded. I, I do like your extra thinking, though. Like, <laughs> this was, like, deep. Like, he – Yeah. Like, we, we talked about <laughs> offline, like you mentioned, like uh, Eric DaCosta be thinking, like, no, you no, that was actually online, on a video. But anyway, how you to talk about Eric DaCosta be thinking way down the road. Like, this guy mm-hmm. might be, like, Eric DaCosta, nephew <laughs> or something. He thinking, like, way down the road. How you, how you feel about this? Uh, and like we spoke about a minute ago, I can only think – right now and so what i'm thinking is i don't think they did that on purpose but you think about it we had three quality running backs to start and you want those all those guys to get carries and you want them to be fresh you had uh, ingram you had um, jk and you had gus Mm -hmm. and so you know obviously ingram was the starter until he wasn't and they just all played they had different packages you know different times or if somebody was tired or certain plays they were good at or certain skill sets that that they wanted them in. And and normally you have, what I'm saying in the past, you've had one guy to do everything. Like a Gurley when he first came in. Gurley could run between the tackles. He could run outside the tackles. He could catch the ball. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of the guys can't, can't do all that right now. And I think J.K. has the better hands out of the two. But um, Gus can catch the ball now. And he wants to be a part of the Russian game, as somebody mentioned about a week ago. <laughs> and um, <laughs> he um, he's just – it wasn't – I don't think it was intentional. It's just we had three quality running backs. And so you get paid, in my opinion, based off numbers. And he – because he didn't have 1,200 yards rushing and whatever. He – I ain't going to say didn't deserve a huge contract, but they kind of do it based off production. And, you know, because he doesn't have – 200 carries he's not gonna have that that top tier production so that's why i think they were able to to get him at the price they got him at now like your your, your question came in that's some upper level thinking if that was if the cost <laughs> sent that down hey look he only needs six carries this game we, we got to resign him and then we could give him some okay that's that's some some back to the future type stuff right there. <laughs> <laughs> now is it well, one thing that I, I will mention though i have heard some people i remember last year I have heard some people that that thought about that, like, oh, maybe the Ravens, because it happens, um, especially when players have those incentivized contracts where it's like, mm-hmm. oh, you get X amount of yards, or X amount of catches, then you'll get this bonus. Um, so I, I have heard people think that maybe the Ravens, one of the reasons why they kept Gus Carey so low because they wanted to keep his value low. So when it came to them potentially re-signing him, they would have to break the bank for him. Yeah, I do now, think I, that happens. Yeah, yeah. I would hope that um I mean it's it's business, man. 
It, it's, it's a business. I was going to say, I would hope that would not be the case, but it NFL is a business. Mm -hmm. um, so it that could be a possibility. And in this case, it certainly worked out when you keep Gus Edwards on an extent for five mil a year, man. That's his second contract. Right. Man, that's filthy, man. It's, it's, it's a great bargain, making every mm -hmm. dollar count.